You know by now that the body is a coordinated system and that the two main coordinators are the nervous system and the endocrine system. Now we need to figure it out, figure out how it is that these two systems keep your body functioning properly. And to do that, you need to know what a feedback loop is. Feedback loops are absolutely everywhere, not just in the biology of your bodies, but in chemistry, physics, astronomy, computer programming, even human behavior and human relationships. The basic idea is that something happens, a stimulus, which causes a response. In order for it to be a feedback loop, the response has to feed back and affect the original stimulus in some way. You can see how this kind of loop could go on effectively forever. A simple example of a feedback loop is a conversation between two people, say Alice and Bob. Alice says something like, hello, how are you feeling? And that elicits a response from Bob. Fine, thanks, how are you? And that causes Alice to respond again and so on. Feedback loops come in two main types, positive and negative. The difference between them is how the loop ends up affecting the original stimulus. In a positive feedback loop, the feedback from the response causes the stimulus to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Using our conversation analogy with Alice and Bob, imagine that Bob is grumpy and keeps responding to Alice in a rude or provocative way. If Alice feels angry at Bob's first response, she will continue to get angrier and angrier as the conversation progresses. Another example of a positive feedback loop is the nuclear reaction process of fission. This is a type of nuclear reaction in which a large, unstable atomic nucleus breaks apart into two smaller nuclei. When it does so, it releases a few stray neutrons. Those neutrons smash into nearby atoms and cause them to split, which releases further neutrons, which causes more atoms to split, and so on. We can adapt our little animation from before to illustrate this. This simulation is based on uranium-235 atoms. Each uranium-235 has an unstable nucleus, and when each nucleus breaks apart, it releases three neutrons. You can see that although you might start with only one nucleus splitting, the neutrons that it releases cause nearby nuclei to split, and then these each release their own neutrons, which go on to cause more nuclei to split, and after a while there are splitting nuclei everywhere. When a fission reaction is allowed to continue in a positive feedback loop like this, it's the basis for a bomb or a meltdown. So a positive feedback loop amplifies a stimulus. It makes it get bigger. That can be useful if you need to turn a small signal into a big one. But if it goes on too long, it might cause a situation to get out of control. A negative feedback loop does the opposite. It keeps the stimulus steady and prevents it from getting too big or too small. To do this, there need to be two kinds of responses in the system. When the stimulus gets too big, one response will act to reduce it. And when it gets too small, the other response will act to increase it. In this way, the two responses keep pushing the stimulus back to a middle point. An example of this is how you respond to the temperature of the room that you're in. If the room is warm and you feel a bit hot, response one might be to take off your jumper. This cools you down. But if you cool down too much and you begin to feel cold, you activate response two, which might be to put your jumper on again, or maybe you turn the heater on. This warms you up again. Although I'm exaggerating the situation in this little animation, you can see that the small changes you make during the day to stay a comfortable temperature can all be divided into responses that warm you up and responses that cool you down. And by balancing these two responses out, you're acting out a negative feedback loop to keep yourself comfortable. <laughs>